Deontay Wilder with the one shot, one hitter, quitter. Holy cow, it reminds me of his Donald Brazil fight or his um, second uh, uh, Bermain Stavern. He's just starched him, one shot. And Teddy, I want to get your Big difference, big difference. Wait, big difference. You know? He delivered. In those no no in those fights he delivered it by setting it up with the jab. Yes, yes this yes, time yes. he set it up with his legs. Something we never saw before. He actually used technique. He used his legs. Credit to Hang Malik on, Scott, I, his oh, new trainer. Give me one second. I want to get to all this uninterrupted because I, I I this there's a lot to unpack and I just want to like set up for someone who might not have seen the fight. Deontay Wilder, you know, you, you've been very critical of his boxing technique, rightfully so. But the one thing that no one will criticize is this guy can well, crack. I, and if he hit, and if he hits Ken, you. punches, I always say, punches are born, they're not made. And, correct. And there's not a million guys born to punch. And he's born no, to not punch. not like this. And to your point, Teddy, and tell me what you think. He was, he basically went back into the ropes. He didn't quite use his full momentum to bounce off the ropes and like deliver a haymaker, but he bounced off the ropes strategically. And Teddy, if this punch went four inches, that would be a, a lot. It was just a little short check right hook, like awkward boink, and touched him right on the chin and Big Hellenius was stiff as a board. So that guy's got power. He said he switched up his gloves because he kept breaking his hands. I think he's using Grant gloves now. But my God, can Wilder punch? And to your point, I can understand. He Sometimes he acts crazy and says some crazy things. But I, for some reason, no, no, I no, think no, this no, guy... No, 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 he had, but he got, I don't know if he got humbled by the beating he took in his last fight, and he took a beating. And, and yes. he showed a lot of heart. And he Two also beatings. dropped Fury. But two in a row. I, I think it changed things in his life. His, I, his that's outlook. what I was gonna say. Is yeah, I, I really do, and I think he's a more well, he's a more mature, humble person now. But again, I never saw him as a world champion until the other night, and he's not a champion right now technically. But he acted like a champion when he said afterwards, "We gotta care about each other more." We got to stop with the hate. When he did that, I was I was stunned. I said, "Good for you." Good. Wow. You know what? I could like you now. I mean, like, <laughs> not that he needs me to like him. He don't give a crap, I'm sure. But I don't care. I just care about what's important to me and what I believe in and what I think matters. I have grandchildren. I have children. Uh, you know, I, I want to see people treated right. You want and, the heavyweight champ to act like that. You want to be able to tell people he's an inspiration. I know people will, Charles Barkley, who I love, and he's one of the greats, and he's so smart, and he's great, and he's gutsy, and say what he believes. He once said, I'm not a role model. But some things you don't get a chance, you don't get the, you yep. really don't get the ability to, to choose. Whether you like it or not, you are a role model sometimes when you're in that position where kids look up to you. And when you're heavyweight champ of the world, like it or not, you can be a role model Un unbeknownst to you, to to thousands, even millions of kids sometimes. I said before the fight, I tweeted just before the fight started. I didn't realize how um, on the button I was going to be, maybe, I don't know. Or it almost was, I'm not saying clairvoyant, but I just tweeted out, there's a reason why why does people pick this guy for his comeback fight, you know, after being obviously so devastated in, in physically and mentally in that fight? There's a reason why they picked this guy. And then about three minutes later, you saw why the guy's out. Now, taking nothing away from Wilder, let's break it down. But, but there's a lot to break down, even though it was a minute. There's still a lot in that that circulates peripherally on the outskirts here of of the ring apron of this fight that go into properly understanding what happened here. Um, Hellenio's 38 years old. And yeah, we're going to go crazy, he knocked him out. But he, he knocked out a guy and he did it. And he did it and it was important. That, and to me, it's not that he did it, it's how he did it that's more relevant here that's more impressive here because Helene has been knocked out before by lesser bangers than Wilder. He's been knocked out twice. And, you know, he, he had lost most of his fights at 
the top level. But he's been in there with good fighters, as I said before the fight. And again, as I said on the program before the fight, you can't take anything for granted when a guy took the beating that Wilder took in his last fight with Fury. There's a piece of you left in that ring. That's why I fight for the fighters, because I don't want them to get robbed, because I know every time they get in the ring, they leave the ring with less of themselves. And he left the ring with less of himself. He did. Uh, and you got to be cognizant of that. You got to say, okay, pick this opponent the right way now because of that, because of the damage psychologically and physically that he took in that fight. So that's part of it. And they, the thing, again, he got a new trainer for the Fury fight. It didn't really show any difference and now it showed maybe a little difference here. Malik Scott, who was a heavyweight, he was a cautious fighter, a defensive-minded fighter. He got knocked out in one round by Wilder. That's the funny thing. Now he's his trainer. I think he did anyway. Pretty sure he did. And now he's training Wilder, but he was a defensive fighter. He's trying to give Wilder something, some idea of something he never had. Defense. A defensive, you know, posture and understanding to him where his whole life in the ring has been offense. You know, I hit the guy and he's gone and that's the end of it. And so he's trying to do that and maybe some of it really showed. But here's the interest. The interesting thing isn't that he knocked the guy out in a minute or whatever it was. Like I said, there's peripheral stuff. There's, there's collateral stuff that's much more interesting. W nobody talked about it, but... Why was Wilder 238 pounds his last fight? And this one, he's 214. Now, maybe he was on a massive weight program. He was bulked up. I thought it hurt, it hurt him. He was so big. He was so bulky. He was like Hercules. He couldn't move. And he got tired quickly. You know about well, that. Well, Teddy, real quick. Yeah, your he muscles got, he don't got get out. He yeah, got he, bulky, but then he had the audacity to say his 40-pound suit weighed him down. No, that was, was the his, fight before <laughs> that. That was All the right. one. That was the first Fury knockout loss. You're right. Uh, but this last knockout loss, he came in there really bulky, 238 pounds, all kinds of muscle on top of muscle. I think he tired in that fight. His muscles couldn't get the oxygen properly in a fight like that. And he, um, but he did it for a reason. I always say 75% of this game is mental and 75% of life for all of you guys in your games out there whatever that game is whatever that fight is it's mental how do you feel about yourself what do you believe not what you could do and how smart you are and how physical and how the, but what do you believe you can do that holds you back or that catapults you one or the other and and I think that when he got knocked out in the rematch with the suit you talked about he, he blamed it on the suit was too heavy and all that stuff he got he got knocked out by fury in a rematch now he's gonna fight him for the trilogy and he was scared we're all scared anyone says they're not please get out of here you either got to go to a doctor or find out find out what's wrong with your your lion hey, he's scared i mean fighters are scared but they're brave they face their fears they go in the ring they do what they got to do but he's coming into this trilogy fight and he's, he's worried. I won't even say scared. He's doubting himself. Why wouldn't he? He just got knocked out. And so he looks for something. So what does he look for? Uh, a weight pro? But he felt, if I get bigger, Fury's too big for me. Your imagination starts going nuts. I got to get bigger. And if I get bigger, I'll be better. I'll be safer. I got to have something to get me in that ring. Something to give me the confidence. Something to keep the wolf from the door. The wolf of doubt from the door. I got to have something to really hold on to. So I'm going to get bigger. I'm going to get bigger. He didn't get better. He got bigger. And he got tired, and his his muscles didn't oxygenate oxygenate uh, during the fight because they were too bulky. So he gets knocked out anyway. There's sometimes you find out that things aren't what you thought they were. There's falsehoods out there, and he finds out that that didn't help him. His strength had to come from him, not putting muscle on, not talking the way he talked, and ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You know all that stuff that he used to do. You know, that's not what gives you strength. That, in some ways, that that's weakness. Because you're not facing what you got to face by yourself, alone. What's coming? 
face it without putting on 30 pounds of muscle or 20 pounds of muscle that you just i'm not saying you can't help yourself in those areas but at the end of the day the greatest help you can get is to know who you are to know who you are to know that you can depend on yourself that you can like yourself, you can trust yourself, you can believe in yourself. Not in the guy you build up, not in the guy that gets 20 pounds. That, that, that's not you. You got to find you. And I think he went back and found him. I think he said, after he got knocked out, he said, okay, that didn't work. You know what? I can't keep reaching for these things to alleviate the, to push the wolf away, the wolf of doubt away from the door. I have to find the right door. The door that opens up the room to the most powerful thing in the world. Knowing who I am. Knowing who I am. Knowing where the real strength is. The strength is me. My conviction of what I do. My, my desire to do it. My resiliency towards doing it. That, that, that's my choice. That's, I don't need anything more than that. He, he allowed himself to go back to 214 pounds and just be wilder and get improved in ways that really can improve you technically doing other things you know that punch he threw that scored the knockout that nice smooth right hand that looked like nothing he couldn't have thrown that in his last fight he would have been too bulky to throw that he couldn't even throw he couldn't have moved on his legs that way because he was too bulky to to move on his legs that way he couldn't even done that he he allowed himself to really get free he he got liberated. I think he got liberated from all the things that he thought were keeping the wolf from the door. The muscles, the bravado, all that stuff that, that he thought was helping him, that, that was keeping the wolf from the door, from, uh, you know, that uh, alleviating the fears or the doubts. No, the only way to do that, they're always going to be there. You, you don't alleviate them. You accept them. And you say, I'm ready for them. You embrace them. Come on, fear. Come on. But I'm ready for them. I'm ready for them. I'm ready to face it. I'm not hiding behind words and bravado and, and, and that kind of stuff. I am facing what I have to face as me. My strength is me. And I think he found that strength. And solace. I think he found solace, maturity. Well, he was a different person, a much better person i think and when you're a better more decent person in those areas you become a more powerful person because the other things are falsehoods they're not you they're they're temporary they're they're, they're you know trying to be nasty trying to go uh, they're not they're not what real strength is being you and i think that he found him and i i know i'm taking it deeper than than people normally would take this stuff but I've been in this business my whole life. I'm, I'm not in a f- boxing business. I'm in a human business. I'm in a conquering business. Conquering yourself. Understand what it is that we're fighting. Understanding that it's, it's not the other guy we're fighting so much. It's you. It's ourselves. What we have to overcome to be able to fight that fight properly.